Welcome to Friday's Devotions. Today we are in the book of Nehemiah and chapter 10. Uh, chapter 10 begins a whole list of names, so we will move beyond the names and begin there at verse 28. So Nehemiah 10, I'm reading from verse 28. The rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, the temple servants, and all who have separated themselves from the peoples of the land to the law of God, their wives, their sons and their daughters, all who have knowledge and understanding, join with their brothers or nobles and enter into a curse and an oath to walk in God's law that was given by Moses, the servant of God, and to observe and do all the commandments of the Lord our of the Lord our Lord and his rules and his statutes. We will not give our daughters to the peoples of the land nor take their daughters for our sons. And if the peoples of the land bring in goods or any grain on the Sabbath day to sell, we will not buy from them on the Sabbath or on a holy day. And we will forgo the crops of the seventh year and the ex exaction of every death. We will also take on ourselves the obligation to give yearly a third part of a shackle for the service of the house of the house of our God, for the showbread, the regular grain offerings, the regular bird offerings, the Sabbaths, the new moons, the appointed feasts, the holy things, and the sin offerings, to make atonement for Israel and for all the work of the house of our God. Amen. In chapter 9 we had that great prayer of the Levites. And then after that prayer which reminded the people of God's faithfulness, his goodness and also them confessing their sin. The people now publicly enter into a covenant with the Lord that they will do, do, do God's will. Those who signed it we see in verses 1 to 8 here are the priests, the Levites verses 9 to 13 and the chiefs among the people verses 14 to 27. And here we see that in this great work of spiritual reformation the leaders take the lead. The leaders in many ways set the temperature among God's people. And so pray for leaders. Pray for your minister. Pray for elders. For leaders in the organisation in your church. That they would be indeed on fire for the Lord. And faithful to the Lord. And set a lead in regards reforming the church. Reforming the people to walk in the ways of the Lord. Now it's interesting that this comment Commitment is described, what it is, is described as producing. The people separated themselves from the ungodly influences and turned to the law of God, verses 28 to 29. This is repentance, which includes a turning away from sin and a turning to righteousness. Here we see something very important. There's particular emphasis that on their children would not intermarry with the people from the other nations and other faiths around them, verse 30. They realise that losing the next generation to these ungodly influences would mean losing everything in regards to the people of God. And we must have a passion for godliness to be the hallmark of our children and future generations. We need to pray that our children will turn away from wrong influence, that our children who know and love the Lord will only marry those who know and love the Lord. That's what the biblical commandment is, 1 Corinthians 7. We need to pray that God would help his people to be faithful, that we would turn away from sin and turn to the Lord and keep his commandments. One of the things that's mentioned here in that passage was keeping the Sabbath day, not being a day of trade, and, but a day set apart to focus on the Lord. That's one of the best ways that we can indeed honour the Lord, not just keeping a Sabbath hour of going to church on a Sunday morning, keeping the whole day, going to church morning and evening if it's possible, giving it a day over to the Lord, that we would be a holy people, that we would be God's treasured possession, a people different from the world around us. That's the reformation we need, a reformation which causes us to turn away from ungodly influences by turning to the Lord with fresh commitment and zeal. Let's pray that God would give us and our churches such grace to be so committed to him. Amen.